Hello there. Today I am going to be reviewing the second season of The Bad Batch. The first season of the show left us with so many questions and I personally was eagerly, eagerly waiting, uh, as probably all of you were as well, for the second season to arrive. And now that it's here, let's dive right into the review. This second season of The Bad Batch picks up right where we left off, uh, on the run from the newly formed Empire after obviously Order 66 took place. The season one finale showed the destruction of Depoka City on Kamino, obviously all the clones as home, uh, like the home planet and home city as well, and then devastated the Kaminoan population as well. Basically the Empire did that so they control the future of cloning for the galaxy. We will eventually find out that this is all part of Palpatine's plan to clone himself for the rise of Skywalker. That's why he did this. It was to gain control of the cloning so he could eventually clone himself if he were to die. Palpatine had so many of these contingency plans in place should anything happen. And he was just such a smart, smart villain. Uh, it's interesting to see that these Disney Plus shows are now sort of building on what we saw in the sequel trilogy. And giving context to that line, somehow Palpatine returned that Poe Dameron had to unfortunately say in The Rise of Skywalker. The uh, basic storyline with this second season is the deterioration of the Batch's relationship with Sid. Sid helped the Batch in the first season, uh, basically gave them jobs in exchange for credits so that they could, the Batch could just make their living and, you know, uh, be able to live without fear of the Empire. But in the second season, Sid seems to be placing the Batch in more and more dangerous situations. And that trust between the Batch and Sid is deteriorating a lot. There was a speed pod racing, sorry, episode where we meet one of Sid's former like allies or like person that she did business with in the past. And he basically warned the Batch that Sid only looks for out for herself. And that is that is what has been playing throughout the whole season is Sid will eventually betray you. And she ends up like she actually does betray them, which is sad to see. So basically the storyline ultimately culminates in the finale episode where Sid reveals the location of the Batch to the Empire who arrive and then capture them. This the season altogether then ends on a cliffhanger as the Batch are captured by the Empire and Omega has uh, has been taken to a former Kaminoan friend Nala Say. The reason for this was so that the Empire could manipulate Nala Se into doing whatever they wanted her to do for them. I think it's to help clone Palpatine for the rise of the First Order. It most likely is that as well. The relationship between the Batch and Omega has been tested this season quite a lot. Firstly, we had Echo leaving. Omega struggled with the reality that she was losing her family after already losing Kamino. But in my opinion, this was the right choice for the show as the clashing of abilities slash personalities between the character of Tech and the character of Echo uh, were far too close and the show basically had to pick who they would rather develop more, culminating in Echo leaving with the Rex to help other clones around the galaxy who were also defecting or wanted to defect from the Empire. Tech and Omega also grew really close uh, together this season in an amazing episode where the fact that Tech struggles with the feeling real emotions, that's basically uh, his like, uh, that's what's unique about him. He He's a very tactical thinker, he's a very knowledgeable thinker, but he struggles to empathize with people and feel real emotions. And basically the episode forced him to be compassionate with Omega. Hunter, on the other hand, has been trying to find stability for the whole batch. He wants to put the running from the Empire and fighting days behind him. And this leads to the batch wanting to settle down on the remote planet of Pabu. However, this ultimately means nothing when they're captured at the end of the season, sadly. Now, in my opinion, some of the better episodes from this season of The Bad Batch were the ones that focused on Crosshair. Within his episodes, we explore how badly the clones were treated by the Empire and after the Clone Wars and how more and more clones were abandoning their roles as soldiers. This results in Crosshair finally betraying the Empire he once promised to serve by shooting his commander after he refused to give a clone medical assistance, thus resulting in that clone's death. That was a very heartbreaking episode. It was also a very powerful episode that I found it interesting that the, the styles of Crosshair's episodes, the style of the Batch's episodes, was like very different. And it was also quite refreshing on a week to week basis, or, you know, when you watch the show. After this, Crosshair is taken into custody uh, by the Empire, but not to a prison. 
instead to a science facility where he's being tortured and experimented on. This is where we leave Crosshair this season. And I'm just going to say this again. In my opinion, Crosshair's episodes were the better episodes this season. My final thoughts regarding The Bad Batch Season 2 is a very enjoyable and entertaining show to watch that is just a fantastic follow-up on that first season with amazing character arcs and development especially Crosshair's development with exquisite animation. The Bad Batch Season 2 is a series that I would most definitely re-watch for years and years to come. The only downsides and sort of uh, negatives I would say from this season is that it was sometimes unaware of what to do with its characters from time to time, uh, like Echo for example, and that they just threw a lot of things at the audience in that finale episode. It should have just been slightly stre uh, spread out in order for all these new bombshells to fully be comprehended by its general audience, Obviously, I'm a person who's watched all the shows and are uh, quite knowledgeable on the expanded universe, but a general audience member would not be aware of those facts. They would just be watching this and sort of thinking, what the hell is going on here? Overall, this show was a fantastic show that I would recommend to any Star Wars fan uh, or even fan of the sci-fi genre. Please give it a watch. It is amazing. And you could tell that people worked very hard on it. So yeah, just give it a watch. It's a great show. And that is it, guys. Thank you guys for watching this video and i appreciate all the love and the content recently make sure you guys leave a like subscribe check out my other content i have so much other content on the channel go check it out i really do appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next video peace